The intent of this video is to review the tactics aircraft would adopt in attacking submarines with depth bombs and to find the lethal distances of these kill stores. This is a part 5 video of the channel's Bombers vs. Submarine Battle of the Atlantic World War II series. The B-24 and its variants were armed with various sensors, equipment, and weapons to effectively engage submarines. The plane's main U-boat kill store was a death bomb. Future videos will focus on the plane's air-to-sea rockets, search sensors, and countermeasures. The B-24 maritime patrolling aircraft were typically armed with 6 to 12 death bombs depending on their patrol distances. This map outlines the bases and sectors the B-24 aircraft would patrol. These lines fan out 1,000 miles from their bases. The source of this map is the declassified July 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. All of the images shown in this video are declassified. As discussed in the Part 3 video, the aircraft observers will likely find the surface submarine before the submarine lookout spot the aircraft. Aircraft spotters will see the submarine and or its wake from about 11 to 23 nautical miles, as shown in this image from the January 1945 Anti-Submarine and Escort of Convoy Report. Aircraft radar range was about the same pickup distances as visual at 8 to 22 nautical miles depending on the conditions and radar type as shown in this table. A submarine lookout will spot the aircraft at around 6 nautical miles. This gives the aircraft a major tactical advantage. A depth bomb will need to detonate within a certain distance from the submarine's pressure hull to be lethal. This chart outlines the lethal distances from the submarine's pressure hull. The x-axis is the depth charge's explosive fill from 0 to 500 pounds. The y-axis is the lethal distance from the depth charge to the submarine's pressure hull from 0 to 35 feet. The two curves in the body of the chart represent the type of explosive fill as either TNT or Torpex. Torpex is considered 50% more powerful than TNT as defined in this December 1942 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The mass properties and parameters of various aircraft deployed anti-submarine depth bombs are shown in this chart. The total weight of the Mark 47 death bomb is 354 pounds. The weight of the Torpex explosive fill is 252 pounds. Around 70% of the weight of the depth bomb is its explosive filler. The hydrostatic fuses for all aircraft drop depth bombs are set to 25 feet. The depth bombs listed will have a forward submerged travel distance of 35 feet. These parameters will need to be accounted for in bomb placement. The lethal range of the Mark 47 equates to around 24 feet. Depth bombs are designed with flat noses to minimize ricochet upon water entry and to minimize underwater forward travel. The explosive fill and additional parameters of ship deployed depth charges are shown in this image for reference. Depth bombs will be released at an altitude of 100 feet or lower as discussed in this image. The depth bombs will be dropped such that the center of the bomb line is coincident with the conning tower at detonation. If attacking the submarine while on the surface, aim for the bow. If the submarine has submerged, the point of aim will be based on the U-boat's duration underwater, the forward speed of the submarine, time from aircraft release to detonation, and the underwater forward travel of the depth bombs. The Norden bombsite was not suited for dropping depth bombs at these low bomb release altitudes, as discussed in this February 1943 Monthly Intelligence Report. A low altitude bombsite was developed for the B-24s dropping depth bombs. This chart outlines the performance parameters of various German U-boats from an April 1944 Chief of Naval Operations German and Japanese submarines and their equipment. A 517 ton class U-boat can travel up to 18 knots while on the surface. The same submarine can maintain a speed of 7.4 knots while submerged. The duration of a crash dive to periscope depth is 28 seconds. The submarine will pass the 100 foot depth in 26 to 40 seconds after it has submerged. Since the depth bomb detonation is set to 25 feet and the kill radius is around 25 feet, the U-boat will be well beyond the lethal range at 100 foot depth. A Class A depth bomb attack is defined as a submarine is attacked while on the surface or within 15 seconds of submergence. A Class B depth bomb attack is defined as a submarine is attacked within 15 to 30 seconds of submergence. The decision to release the death bombs for a Class B depth bomb attack rests with the commander. No bombs are to be released after 30 seconds of submergence. 
This point really hits home on the urgency of attack. The aircraft has only a 45 to 60 second window from being spotted to deployment of the depth bombs. This duration will include transit to the depth bomb release point, release duration of the depth bombs to water entry, and the underwater travel distance to detonation. This image from a 1945 U.S. military intelligence document titled Timely Tactical Topics lists some simple rules of thumb based on combat lessons learned, such as transit to the submarine as quickly as possible, best to release the depth bombs while the U-boat is on the surface, if the U-boat is dived, estimate its path and drop the depth bombs to detonate within the conning tower's lethal zone. Accuracy has diminished once the submarine is fully submerged. Allow two seconds for the depth bomb to free fall in air. Allow three seconds for the travel underwater to a 25 foot depth. Aim 65 feet ahead of the assumed conning tower position to account for the five second depth bomb travel duration. This 3D chart outlines the path taken by a submarine in an emergency crash dive. The vertical axis is the depth of the center of the submarine's pressure hull from surface to 333 feet. The horizontal axis is the distance of the submarine's bridge travel from 0 to 1,985 feet. The normal line is the duration from the start of the dive to 3 minutes and 45 seconds. The crash dive sequence starts here at x, time 0. 30 seconds later, the submarine's bridge is submerged. The submarine will travel another horizontal distance of 185 feet during the next 15 seconds. The center of the pressure hull will be at a depth of 47 feet. This is within the lethal range of a hull straddling depth charge. 15 seconds later, the center of the pressure hull will be at a depth of 70 feet. The submarine will be outside the lethal range of the depth bombs. This assumes the submarine takes a straight course. If the captain applies full rudder, then the submarine will take this path and deviate 279 feet from the normal line. This image graphically illustrates an aircraft attack with four depth bombs on a submerged submarine. The submarine's residual swirl location is here. Assume the U-boat's underwater speed is 10 feet per second. Set the center of the depth bomb's train on the conning tower. The hollow circles are the splash points for the depth bombs. Account for a 35 feet underwater forward travel of each depth bomb. The solid circles represent the location of the depth bombs at detonation. The larger circles represent the lethal radius of the depth bombs. The impact spacing between the depth bombs is based on the weight and type of explosive and can vary from 60 to 70 feet as described in this chart shown earlier. Crews were warned that overwater distances are generally underestimated by 66%, as defined in this image from the February 1943 Anti-Submarine Command Monthly Intelligence Report. The crew needs to account for the forward underwater travel distance of the submarine within the critical 0 to 15 second window after fully submerged. This distance error estimation could result in depth bombs dropped well short of the target. This error can be mitigated with practice though. It should be clear, once a submarine has submerged, the window for a successful attack diminishes by the second. So how effective were depth bomb attacks from aircraft? This chart shows the results of 150 submarine attacks by aircraft during the period from January 1943 through July 1943. The chart is from a 1946 Chief of Naval Operations Anti-Submarine Warfare and World War II report. The first column is the degree of submarine trim during the aircraft attack. The second column is the number of attacks. The third column is the percentage of attacks and the state of the submarine after the attack, classified as A through D. S status A through D is known sunk, probably sunk, probably damaged, possibly sunk, and probably damaged. The fourth column is the percentage of attacks and the state of the submarine after the attack, classified as just A and B, sunk, or probably sunk. 95 of the attacks were made while the submarine was on the surface or within that critical 15 second submergence window. 15 submarines were sunk or probably sunk during those 95 attacks or 16%. 20 submarines were attacked when the submarine was submerged beyond 15 seconds. None of these submarines were sunk or damaged. The key takeaways from the video are the aircraft will see the submarine before the submarine will see the aircraft. A depth bomb has a lethal range of around 25 feet. This depends on the explosive weight and the type of explosive fill. 
Aim the center of the depth bomb train to detonate at the U-boat's conning tower. The depth bomb spacing is around 60 feet with a hydrostatic fuse setting to 25 feet. An aircraft's window to drop depth bombs is around 45 seconds from the start of the crash dive. This accounts for the U-boat's 30 second crash dive and another 15 seconds of underwater travel. Combat data indicates a 16% chance of sinking or probably sinking a U-boat if attacked while on the surface or within the 15 second submergence window. No hits were scored when attacking submarines that submerged beyond 15 seconds. Did any information shown surprise you? Let me know in the comments section. Also please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel World War II U.S. Bombers.